Hey guys, we got some breaking news for you because Land Rover just introduced the new 2021 Land Rover Defender and there are significant changes and additions to the lineup. But Nathan, I gotta tell you, as much as I wanna love this thing, I can't help but feel that it's basically a glorified Land Rover Discovery 6. No, you're wrong. This is a serious off-roader. So uh, we're social distancing, so that's why you're so far away, Nathan. Yes, I am. But in this video, we are going to tell you exactly uh, what the changes are, and then we're going to have a, I'd say, spirited discussion about what the new Land Rover Defender really is. So Nathan, give us the news. All right, well, here's the news. The biggest part of this whole thing is the fact that the U.S. finally gets the Defender 90. Now, it is approximately 17 inches shorter, both in length and wheelbase, than the 110. And the 110 is obviously your bigger vehicle that can hold more people. This one, the 90, is much smaller, much better numbers for off-roading too, by the way, in terms of overall dimensions. And here's the cool part. It can actually hold up to six people because you can get an option for a front bench seat. That's cool. Yeah, I'll give you that. You know, full disclosure, we have one on order. Uh, not the 90, the 110, because we wanted to be first to get it. We ordered it like a month ago, and of course, we're still waiting for it because uh, these are built in Slovakia, Nathan. And so it takes yes. a while for them to get here. All right, Slovakia, ahoy. <laughs> but there's also a new trim level, right? Yes, there is. So let's talk about that new trim level. Now, bear in mind that um, we are talking about a vehicle that starts just under $50,000. <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that one. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Um, so, I mean, realistically. So they have a new class, a new a trim level, which is called X-Dynamic. Now, it is distinguished. It's basically a trim, so it just has some extra goodies with gloss black painted wheel arches, along with cladding, satin finish. Uh, there is a special fabric they call Robo... I guess that's a, a Slovakia thing. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the hell that is. It? Ro uh, ro <laughs> it's basically polyurethane, isn't it? It's like a, yeah, like it's, a it's, it's it's for high wear, wear spots on the seats, so you don't destroy the seats. And it's a less expensive option than leather, obviously. But um, so you do get that, and this option is available with the S, the SC, and the HSE. So you can actually kind of uh, play around with those packages. But this is a sort of a in between thing between your base model and your much more expensive trim models. So there's that. But in terms of powertrain, in terms of overall you know, suspension, all that stuff, it all remains the same. So we recently did a video where we compared the old Defender to the new one, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I hate to say this, but the old one is so much more capable, given the fact that it was lifted. But the old one is just a squared off, uh, you know, tractor taken to the off-road level, which this is- This is squared off, look at that. That's a <laughs> box right there, that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's about as square as some like London-based designer thinks square is. Oh, and that, that is really square. I, I, I have a straight edge that, that's not a square. But, but the old one, right, was like rugged and, uh, you know, it was, I'll give you the fact that it was maybe like, you know, two steps away from a tractor, but that's one. what you want off-road, right? You want it to be uh, easily liftable, you want it to be... Uh, so rough that when you get some trail damage on it, it adds to the character and doesn't take away from the character. The new one, uh, you know, I get this feeling that it's, like I said, some designer who lives in London's concept of what an off-roader should be. Okay, glad you said that so you're wrong. Um, because they put a lot of time and effort into this because they knew people like you exist. And here's my point. That vehicle, this vehicle behind me, is the sum of a lot of years of being slammed by automotive journalists who've said, you guys are making vehicles that are far too soft. And really good examples of that would be like the Range Rover Velar and some of those other vehicles, which are really soft. Yes, they can kind of off-road, but they just never had the tires for it. The suspension wasn't quite right. This vehicle, if you get the base model, you can get uh, coil spring suspension, not air suspension, which a lot of you guys complain about, coil springs. Another thing is that you have really good ground clearance to begin with, and you can lift this vehicle. You can put bigger tires on it. It can, it can do off-roading nearly as good as out of the box, straight axle vehicles from American automakers. And at the same time, on the road, it is pleasant. The one thing about the old Defender, when you go on the road, 
if you are a male, you may not be when you're done. <laughs> it will jiggle and it will shake and it will hurt you and your voice will look, go up an octave. Look, like they discontinued it a bunch. Oh, I think 2015 was the last year. I, they I think so. Yeah, built the old Defender. And you're right. It was a rough beast that was designed about 30 years ago and they kept you know slowly uh, making it better and making it more modern but at the end of the day it was a rather rough uh, vehicle but you know there's something about simplicity and off-roading that go together of course Land Rover slash Range Rover were the first to kind of pioneer uh, terrain management mm -hmm. right and so they, they've gone not just all in they've gone like double all in on it right so they've gone away from the, the basic lockers to um, very sophisticated electronic controls they still have lockers but it's not like hey let's turn them on and let's turn them off right it's now select the kind of terrain that you're on and the vehicle will do everything and when we took it off road I gotta tell you dude you had to work it to get it up and over some of the obstacles it just wasn't uh, as intuitive as a natural of an athlete as you would expect uh, a vehicle that it is like the old one where you just lock stuff up and it just crawls over rocks. The one that you took off road, was that the six cylinder or the four cylinder? It was a six cylinder. It, we, I think we're the only ones actually in the entire country buying the four cylinder. <laughs> I'm serious, dude. Yeah, the, so there's so, a four cylinder turbo <laughs> that put, yeah, yeah, it's not as powerful. That makes 295 or 96 horsepower. Yep. And the one you drove uh, has 395, but that's a hybrid. Okay, and I surmise that the lighter i4 will be a better off-roader. I hope you're right, dude. No, no, I know I'm right. I mean, I mean, just think about even the way that they were selling it, right? So for the first year, you could not get the two-door, the 90. You yeah. could only get the four-door. They had a um, launch edition. Uh, so all the ones that you can go and buy right now are close to $80,000. Dude, these are $80,000 vehicles. That's not an off-roader. Okay. Uh, now, it is an off-roader, and the reason why is because there are a lot of other off-roaders that are just as expensive. In yeah, fact... G-Wagon. G-Wagon, one. No, 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 no. I know for a fact that somebody you recently interviewed has designed a vehicle that will probably cost, cost close to $100,000 fully loaded. And we are talking about the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. It's coming, and yeah. it's going to be really, really, really re expensive. I'll give you that, but it's going to be an on-roader. That, that one is definitely aimed at the Navigator. I, it, it will be. There will be an off-road version. All right, so, so, you know, it just feels like the thing is, I hate to say this, too precious to take off-road. And I, I'm, I'm going to give it up to Steve Bird, uh, Land Rover of Denver, who actually, you know, lifted it. Uh, well, Johnson Rod lifted it, or, I, okay, he didn't use Johnson Rod, he used a rod lift where you can fool the air suspension into thinking that it's in off-road height when it's, mm -hmm. anyway, that, that, that's the lift. Uh, uh, because that's how you have to do a, an air suspension vehicle and he put bigger tires on it and was not afraid to like you know tear up the wheels so I thank you guys from Land Rover of Denver for actually you know showing that the thing can go off-road but it really does feel like it's more comfortable and happy on road than it is off-road I'm gonna say this Nathan I'm gonna say it, it can go off-road in terms of rock crawling but it's much better at maybe being an overlander than an off-roader okay um, it would be you're wrong there too, because overlanding really would be great for this vehicle with the diesel, and that's the one thing for, for that we don't get, yeah, is cool. the optional diesel, which is available on its brothers, but it's not available in, on this in vehicle. In Europe and other markets. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's kind of like, that, that's a shame on you to Land Rover. Now there is something really important. Um, you can't quite see it here, but you can get a spare tire hanging off the rear, which by the way, adds an extra 10 inches to length, which is always important. And a spare tire hanging off the rear of any vehicle makes it more off-road worthy. And you can get a snorkel, and you can get yeah. some cool stuff. You can yeah. get a, a, a winch. You can also get uh, onboard air. A ladder. But, but all that stuff is crazy expensive. I mean, crazy expensive. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, but, but, uh, not, not little expensive. I mean, you know, thousands of dollars for a snorkel or for I think it's for, I think if I remember right, I was looking at it when we were specking ours. You know how much it would cost just to get a winch prep ready on the front with that you know, bull bar, $4,000. So basically the price of a Suzuki Samurai. Yeah, is, yeah, is, the is, price is, of your Suzuki Samurai. Is, is the price yeah. for that. Yeah, that, that, I'm not debating that this is an extraordinarily expensive vehicle, but there is one final point that I need to make here, Roman, and this is why all of you are wrong who have been putting this vehicle down. Even myself, by the way, I, I did a video where I was talking about people who were disappointed with this, how there were options out there because they're, they're rebuilding and, and kind of, you know, the old uh, Defender. This vehicle is featured as a bad guy car in the new James Bond movie. It and, is. And, 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 and 
uh, No Time to Die, I believe, right? Yeah. And there is, in the new preview, a scene where they've got these things jumping like crazy and slamming into the ground and bouncing around and doing some really great off-roading. I'm pretty sure most of them broke after that, but it didn't look like it, at least, you know, movie magic. So, a James Bond baddie vehicle immediately increases the value of the vehicle. It's an intrinsic value that actually grows over time. And because it's Daniel, Daniel Craig's final movie, as such, bad guy, final movie, Daniel Craig, James Bond, it's worth every penny. All right, all right, here's my final argument. And I'm gonna give this to you, but once I say this, you'll never be able to unsee it. So uh, if you um, don't wanna hear this, I suggest you tune out of this video right now, because once I say it, you will never unsee it again. Okay, say you it. ready? Mm -hmm. I had an epiphany, Nathan, and the epiphany is that the styling on the new Defender uh, is a ripoff of a G product. Can you guess which one it is? It, it's basically a double XL Renegade. It, it, no! <laughs> Look at it. That is a, a double XL Renegade. It, you it, cannot argue that. Just because that. it's square. It's <laughs> no. square. No, you're, 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 you're old. Your eyes are failing you. So it's, it's it, okay, I get it. You know, it's very, very square. But the thing is, is that square makes sense off-road. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a giant Renegade. That's what that is. Look at the headlights. Look at the nose on it. Look at the proportions. If you were to take the Renegade and blow it up to double XL, that's what you'd end up with. All right, it, it does look a lot like the Renegade, I'll give you that. But the thing is, it, it still looks like um, a Land Rover product. Damn you. I told you, you'll never unsee it once I tell oh, you. Oh, you did that, didn't you? Oh, that hurts. What do you guys think? I mean, do you guys, first of all, do you guys think that this is a proper off-road vehicle? Do you think they did it right? Or do you think that they need to add something to it? That's the first question. The second question, of course, is do you think it looks like a renegade? It doesn't. And the final most important thing is would you guys... Now, bear in mind, they say starting price is around 46 but the reality is you're not going to get one. Ours, from ours, I think, when it was all said and done, and, and I went and checked the cheapest options possible, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, when we ordered ours, white paint. No yeah. additional cost. Right. Four cylinder engine, no additional cost. Cloth interior, right? I, I checked, the only option I got was the ones that made it more off road worthy. So you can get, it comes with obviously a rock locking center diff because it's got a low range. Right, you so, get the rear locker, yeah, right? Yeah, I got the rear locker. Uh, uh, and I think I got the little like push bar on the front to make oh, it look, you know okay. what I mean? To make yeah, the $4,000 push bar. No, that's for the winch ready one. Oh, okay. The one I got was like $1,200. $1,200 push bar, okay. <laughs> it wasn't 12, it wasn't. At least it's, it's not cool, too right? bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, and I think that one it was 64000 and that was the cheapest one I could order when it was all said and done. And but that's, that's off-road worthy. That's off-road worthy, but yeah. you also ordered that right when the ordering started. Yeah, so. and, and I did get that seat. The, 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 oh, the, the bench seat up the front? The bench seat, and that's actually a $300 option, I think, if I, if I recall right. You guys can correct me. Yeah, so that means that you, Tommy, and Alex are in the front, because I'm not going to be, <laughs> three of us. You're not going to ride, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not riding in the middle, that's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, what do you guys think about this, though? I mean, you know, I, I think that they did a great job in taking something technology they already have had. Oh, and oh, oh, we got Steelies, too. Oh, you got see, that. See, that, that looks so cool. We got Steelies, cool. yeah. That oh, we okay. got Steelies. My opinion is Steelies are the best thing for off-road because unlike aluminum and all that other stuff, you can actually bang a steely back. But it took of. a lot of work to get, like, like oh, to, I'm to sure go you... through. And, like, it was not, you know, you could tell that the configurator was not set up. To, to do the cheap one. It was, it was almost like, you sure you want that option? I'm like, yes, I want the steel uh, wheels. You double sure you, you want, want that the steel option? Wheels, yeah, yes. yeah, that's, <laughs> that's kind of unfortunate because it looks really cool. But, you know, the bottom line is I still think that this is a great idea and I think that they've actually taken it to the right level. Unfortunately, I think that they may have fallen a little short in terms of its overall ability, but maybe, just maybe this 90 is the answer to that. Yeah, and if you guys uh, are out there on YouTube, check out uh, Land Rover of Denver. Steve uh, there is doing some pretty crazy stuff with it, proving that it is indeed very off-road worthy. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll do the same thing once we get ours. I won't be afraid to batch it up, so. I won't be either. Uh, we're looking at October, Nathan. We ordered it back in August, so. Cool, cool, that means I actually get the keys? <laughs> yeah, you get the keys. <laughs> ah, yeah, <laughs> stay month, tuned. Another month away. All right, <laughs> thanks for watching. See you guys See next See you guys. Time. Ciao.